There's a version of Christianity that I've often talked about where the idea is to maximize positive emotions, right? To try to feel as good as possible. You know, we could call this the gospel of nice. Try to be as nice as possible and we just spread positive vibes. And if everybody's just nice, then we won't have wars, we won't have conflicts, we won't have problems in the world. So I'm not saying and we should, we should embrace like a gospel of mean. But what I would say is there's a place for anger and there's a place for all the difficult emotions in the spiritual life. God gave us our humanity for a reason, and he gave us our emotions. He gave us anger, he gave us fear, he gave us all the different things that we go through. Now the problem is not so much with the raw experience or the emotion itself. As St. Thomas Aquinas would say, the passions or emotions are neutral. It's when they hijack our reason, when they go beyond their means, when reason is no longer driving the bus. We see in today's gospel, Jesus gets angry, right? He calls Peter Satan. That's not a compliment, right? I mean, I'm not sure. It doesn't matter how you translate that. Calling somebody Satan is, is not pretty. Is not nice. I, I think there's a lot that could be said for that. He rebukes Peter. And there's something to be said for the need to also to be rebuked and to rebuke others. And when we say that, I mean, that word can have multiple connotations, but it's important in relationships. It's important with kids. You know, I've seen it sometimes. It's important to tell your kids that you love them. That's great. It's important to, to support them, but it's also important sometimes to discipline them, to tell them that they've done wrong, to tell them that what they're doing is not good. And there's a sense that when you don't discipline your kids, oftentimes they can sense that they're displeasing you and they can sense that it's not good, but they, they don't know what, they don't know how to put a word on it. So there's a sense that there's a place for anger in the spiritual life. St. Thomas Aquinas says, there are three circumstances in which we can fall into sin with anger. The first one is obvious enough, which is we fall into sin when we're angry about the wrong things. So for example, if we see the success of somebody else, we're, if we get angry about it and it's a good for them and it's something that's truly good, if we get angry about that, then we've fallen into sin. The second way is when we're angry about something that is good, but it goes beyond the bounds of reason. That is, there's an excess of anger, that anger hijacks our reason. And the third way he says, this is fascinating. He says, if we don't get angry about things that we ought to be angry about. So it's fascinating, right? So sometimes we get these people, and some of, I don't think any of you guys are thinking this, but sometimes you get in a congregation, you get people and they go, well, Father, I'm always like friendly. I never get angry. I'm never upset at anybody. And, and, and maybe they're right, or maybe they're kind of not paying attention to what's going on inside. But I would say if they're right, like if you're kind of going through life and you're just like, whatever, man, it's all good. Like it's all positive vibes. No need to, you know, I've, I, I'm on the beach with my, with my margarita and my Jimmy Buffett song and life is good for me. I don't care that, you know, babies are starving and there's rioting or whatever. And, and so there's a sense that we should be angry about things, particularly evil and injustices. See, what anger allows us to do is it allows us to be motivated when it's governed by reason. Anger gives us that fire in that belly to stand up and say enough, to say, you know, to say to a spouse, what you've done, I did not like. You know, you, 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 know, you hurt my feelings or you did something that I think was unjust. That's what we see with the gospel of Jesus and Peter. It's, it's actually interesting is this line is actually used a lot in a lot of spiritual direction context, which is a lot of times when it comes to temptation, it comes to the work of the enemy, the desert fathers would say, God gave us anger to fight the demons. That is, the primary means for anger is to stand up to Satan, to stand up to the demons and say, enough is enough. Get behind me, Satan. Uh, this is not of God, right? That's, the, that's what the Desert Fathers would see as the primary means. It's kind of an interesting thing. This is a little bit of a tangent. The way exorcisms work is that when somebody needs an exorcism, it's because they can't stand up to Satan and the demons, where they cower in fear. So what you have to do is you have to free the person from their attachment, and then you have to strengthen the will so that they can stand up on their own and say, enough is enough. I will not be a slave to this. I will overcome this. So the primary means by standing up in anger is within. And then as we learn to conquer the thought trap within, to conquer the negative ruminations and the solitude of the heart, then we can go out into the world and with peace and with calm, seek to solve the world's problems. Remember what our Lord says, you know, remove the beam from your own eye before you remove the splinter from somebody else's. 
And when you learn to make that interior journey and conquer fear and anger and hatred in the heart, when you learn to conquer those thought traps, then you're able to go out into the world with a voice of tenderness and peace and, and to address injustices, to address evils. So I would encourage everybody today to do. I think we can all guarantee you're going to be angry sometime this week, guaranteed. I don't care what side you're on politically or where you stand with social issues, there's enough for all of us to be angry about right now, no matter where you stand on things. But the question is gonna be, how are you gonna allow that to motivate you to do what you're called to do? How are you gonna let reason drive your bus? And what I want you to do is, when you're in the solitude of heart, when there's thought traps, when you're thinking about the corruption of the church, or you're thinking about the bad situations, the corruption in the world, and that thought trap, that negative pattern starts to go, and you start to spin downward, I want you to hear our Lord saying, through you and with you to that thought trap. I want you to imagine it like it's a demon, because it is, and it's ugly, and it's nasty, and he's snarling at you like a dog. And instead of cowering in fear, instead of letting him have control, I want you to learn to stand up and say, get behind me, Satan. You're, you're, this is not of God. This is not of the Holy Spirit. Even if on the surface it appears to be so. And the more we learn to do that, that's how we cultivate that stillness within. Amen.